Hello, welcome to Unspoiled Gamer. I'm your host, Rob, on this special special late night show. Well, I mean, it's not that late uh, in the UK, but I'm joined by two legends from the Age of community. Tom, hello, Tom, how are you? I'm, I'm very good. Good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, okay, good evening, yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's Tom. There's lovely Tom on the left, all six foot seven of the of the beautiful Man Mountain. Uh, and at the bottom, as if he's just come from a photo shoot himself, is Jeffrey. <laughs> good evening, everyone. <laughs> 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 well, it's lovely to have you both on the show. Uh, the reason that we're here, and if you're listening to this back or, on YouTube or you're watching us live right now in the Twitch chat or or you are um, uh, listening to this back on YouTube, is there's a really big uh, team event, a four-person team event over in Amsterdam next weekend. I'll be covering it all on the T-Sports Network, so you'll be able to watch all of it live, which is really exciting. You've got people traveling from all over. Tom's going to tell us more about that in a minute. But we're going to talk about the meta. We're going to talk about the list. We're going to talk about competitive Age of Sigma in a team format, which hasn't really been much opportunity to talk about since Worlds and with a new GHB and a new bunch of other stuff. There's actually loads of insight, and I know Tom and Jeffrey, who are both very competent gamers, are going to be able to give us some really good insights as well. So, personally, very much looking forward to it. Before we do any of that, though, Tom, how are you doing? How's things? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing great, actually. Um, obviously, prepping for the uh, for next week, for the event. We've been checking lists uh, the past few days, uh, not only to get ready for the show, but like to be get ready in general, because uh, it's 72 lists, and... Uh, even though there's a high level of play, people still make a lot of mistakes when submitting lists. So we've been pretty busy doing that. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'm doing I'm doing great. Very hyped and excited for next week. Interesting uh, little fact, actually, when Blood Tithe, which is like an international team tournament that happens in the UK, uh, happened last year for LGT. I think Mark, um, uh, who runs the event, uh, told me that he thinks he thought about 45 to 55 percent of the list were illegal, which was uh, (laughs) (laughs) pretty high standard. Uh, So I don't know. Were they lower this time or like where, where do you think they're roughly at the moment? Um, I think maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeffrey, but I think from the 72 lists that we had, I think about not that many, maybe 15 needed some adjustments. It was mostly uh, people uh, filling their battalions wrong or um, we had a team that had a battle major two lists, even though there, we, you can't share war scrolls among team players. So uh, that, that was one of the things, for example. Um, so I think, yeah, it wasn't that big, actually, to be honest. We had one, like, really illegal list that had too many allies compared to how many uh, units it had. Uh, but, yeah, I think it was was okay. Yeah, I, th- I think it was fine as well. Like, usually when an addition just starts, right, when a new GHB drops or something, that's, like, the moment usually a lot of mistakes uh, are being made. But, yeah, I think uh, people know already uh, what's up. So the yep. lists were kind of okay, right? But it's still a lot of lists to uh, to go through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Okay. Well, good, good, Jeffrey. Yourself, you also aren't playing, so you're else you're helping Tommy. You two, the 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 management team. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We uh. So we also have a 40k uh teams event at the same time. Oh, amazing. Uh. So we In kind the same of room. have. Yeah, in the same room. <laughs> so we kind of uh, have like two departments. Uh, you have the guys from Alliance Open uh, uh, that do the 40K part, and then me and Tom are uh, responsible for Age of Sigmar. So it's our job next weekend to make it, se- make it well, not make it seem, to just to let everyone know that Age of Sigmar is cooler than 40K. That's obviously our main job. Of course. <laughs> people know, but we just have to verify. But yeah, people yeah, know. Yeah, yeah we just got to make sure people know, right? Like, okay, good. All right. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> All right, okay. So, Tom, do you want to tell us uh, um, uh, the, uh, like, what are kind of, how many players are, are attending the teams? And also, I know a lot of people are traveling, right? Where are they coming from? Yeah, exactly. We uh, for the Age of Sigma event, we have seventy-two players, and actually, exactly the same uh, amount for the forty K team event. And I'm not sure about the forty K side because uh, our colleagues uh, run that part of the show. But um, for us, we have about eight countries coming. So we have we have a team from Malta, we have t- two Danish teams, uh, we have a um, team actually from Serbia who will also be joining Worlds next year for the first time. Um, so they, that captain has approached us, uh, you know, to practice a little bit for the format. Um, we have a team from Switzerland, 
Um, what am I forgetting? I already mentioned Denmark, I believe. Uh, and we, we actually have a United Nations team as well. Uh, one of the guys that sometimes helps us with our event, Lex. You, you know him. Uh, hello, Lex. Love Lex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's bringing, uh, I believe, a French guy, uh, two French guys, and someone else that, like the four of them have never met, maybe. I, I is there, is, well, so. isn't, isn't he bringing Christophe, who was in the US, UN team at Worlds, yeah. I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christophe uh, Salami, uh, for example. So uh, there, uh, And he, he was also going to bring uh, Math Mello, but unfortunately he had to cancel. Yeah, he's currently on a boat in the, in the ocean somewhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's exactly. pretty that's pretty exciting, right? So it's been hosted in Amsterdam, just so everyone aware. Um, and uh, two Danish teams, a Serbian team, a Switzerland team, and a UN team. That's pretty diverse. Yeah. You've got a, Malta. A, a, yeah. Malta. Yeah. Uh, do we have any French players? French teams? Yes, we, have, uh, we also have two French teams and uh, two, well, let's say one and a half Belgian team. Uh, yeah. Are the Belgian teams really Belgian or are they just French B teams? Uh, it's causing a bit of early controversy. Just I can't. Refrain. <laughs> I beat the fifth. <laughs> it's like the Welsh team. We're like, we're not English B team. Like, get rid of it. Um, so <laughs> Belgium's got the same yeah. thing, unfortunately. Uh, okay, amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, Jeffrey, is there any kind of standout uh, players like from Worlds? Because you played in Worlds, right? Versus Tom, who was yeah. the who was the ref for Worlds. Yeah, that's correct. Is so there anyone I, you played was, who... Uh, oh, go on, after you, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. No, I was uh, indeed uh, playing for the Dutch team. Uh, we went for the first time this year. And, uh, yeah, Tom helped a lot with the refing. Uh, this year, uh, or, well, next year, actually, he's also the head ref of, of Worlds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so uh, organizer, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's going to be held in the same venue that, where we are next week, actually. So uh, where the AOTC is, is actually the same venue as where Worlds is going to be held next year. So I think for a lot of the teams, uh, it's going to be nice to uh, you know get acquainted with the hotel, uh, with the terrain we use, uh, and see what kind of lunch they'll have next year, because it's going to be the same. Um, but uh, I'm interrupting Jeffrey now, uh, who's, who's going to talk about the good players that are coming. So... Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, everyone will get a nice little sneak peek for for next Worlds, I guess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I think I think because me and Tom both went to uh, to Worlds last time, I think that's what has gotten uh, many teams in for our teams event now. Because I mean, it's amazing we never had this many countries attending one of our tournaments actually. So it's yeah, that's fairly... great. I'm really looking forward to it. It's right next to the airport, so it's fairly easy to get yeah. to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's actually a free shuttle bus that goes from the airport to the hotel every yeah. 30 minutes or so. Uh, very so, different to like... the uh, 40k event, uh, <laughs> World Championships, which was an hour from the airport, uh, which f feels like a big miss. Um, uh, but anyway, okay, yeah, lo yeah, loads of loads of good players attending, which is really fun. Uh, Tom, just a yeah. couple of like quick notes on like the rules pack before we get into yes. looking at the lists. So it's four person teams. I assume you can't duplicate battalions, artifacts, war scrolls. Is there anything kind of um, that you can do? Because at Worlds last year you could duplicate battalions. I think yes, we we did the same for now. So, but that's the only thing actually. So there's no duplicate war scrolls, no duplicate grand strats. Um, really, no, no dupl duplicate general enhancements. So only one Arkin Tome, uh, one uh, amulet, which nobody will take. But uh, you get the gist. And uh, but battalions, we felt we shouldn't. Um, yeah, we, we didn't want to limit those because it won't be limited at Worlds as well. And I think this should be a good opportunity for for teams maybe to train uh, and then get as close to the Worlds pack as we can. The only difference we made, obviously, because it's four person teams and not eight, is we made some changes to the um, pairing system, which I think is interesting. Um, I don't know if we can get in, into that later if you want, but um, people will have a little bit of an idea then, because it's it also explains some of the list choices, I think. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do, you want to, do, you want to, do you want to do you want to walk me through what the difference is pairings for people who may yeah, never sure. just very quickly for anyone who's never ever been to a team format event. Obviously, when you have a team, two teams play each other, but you have to work out how those two teams of however many people are going to play. And in that process, you go through something through the pairings process, which is where you have a bunch of cards and you put one, uh, you secretly put one down, and then someone puts two attackers down, and then you flip it over, and then you, the defender, which is the one you put down, picks one of the two, and then you go through that process until every 
everyone is paired up. Basically, that's the process. What's what's changed? What have you done different? Yeah, so the, that system works almost the same, but for por- four-person teams, um, you're done pretty quickly if you go to one defender, two attackers, uh, and and uh, it's it, we, we rolled it out and we played it out a couple times with some uh, uh, example lists, and um, you could really play it out too much with four-person compared to eight. So we decided that we wanted to add a little bit of an extra dimension, and it means that you know normally you put down a defender and the other team puts down two attackers, and you mm-hmm. pick one of the attackers to play your defender. Uh, right now, what we did is that the attacker that's not going to be picked uh, is going to become the new defender for that team, but he can also choose his own mission. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so, every, so all missions are going to be played. Every round, the teams can select um, three missions. One mission is guaranteed, so the first table will always be mission A, for example. But the other two missions depend on what the defender, that the attacker that wasn't chosen, uh, what they pick. So, for example, let's say Turf War is available that round, and you have Gargans in front of you, for example, and uh, a, a different list. You might you might want to play the other list, but that means Gargans can get to play on Turf War, for example, guaranteed. So um, I think that makes it extra interesting for captains. Yeah, kind of interesting thing last year. We know England obviously won AOS Worlds Championships last year. Uh, and I think a lot of that came down to Tom and his ability to pair into missions. In fact, actually, yes. uh, post the event, Tom said that uh, pairing into missions was more important than pairing into armies. Uh, Jeffrey, would you say that that feels still true for like this battle pack and these missions? Like, What are you thinking? Um, yeah, I mean, the, I still think... For the Dutch team, because it was the first time we went there, one of our key takeaways was uh, next time focus on battle plans as well, not just the army. So, uh, and yeah, of course, four man teams are a bit different, but uh, I still think uh, battle, like playing battle plans, is 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 key in teams, because even though if you face like an army, you cannot handle that well. If you just play well into the mission, then you will always have the advantage. Uh, I believe. Okay. All right, interesting. Interesting, the mix-up. Uh, okay, uh, really fun, really fun. <laughs> so should we t- take a look at the ma- meta? The meta? Unless there's any yeah, other standout sure. rules that have changed, Tom, for this event. Um, no, I don't think. I think the pairing one's the most interesting one. And maybe good to good to note, since it's been a hot topic uh, for a while, that uh, chess, chess clocks are going to be mandatory. So uh, which yes. is maybe uh, something that other events won't do, but we have chosen to do that. Yeah, and also we uh, we are using uh, capped scores and uncapped scores, and then we have the for the lurkers below. So for people that don't know, you have like three uh, objectives, and you can only gain control of how do you explain this? Like the middle one, if you have your home objective, and you can only gain control of the last one if you have the first two. And the moment you control all of them, you have this insta win. Uh, so you cannot score any victory points, right? And our scoring system is based on a uh, f- victory point uh, differential. So we also added a manual scoring uh, yeah. for for lurkers below, like okay. because we just we just did like a twelve eight for the minor victory. A uh, what was it? If you get a major victory in round three, it's twenty zero. If you get a major victory in round four, it's 17-3, and if you get a major victory in round five, it's fourteen six. Yeah. Okay, so more of, more of a more of a tiered scoring system versus yeah uh, for, that, for versus, that mission yeah versus pure yeah we don't we don't like a mission just being twenty zero or ten ten. Yes. I, I, yeah. Because it messes up the maths. Because again, yes. 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 <laughs> again, just for people at home who might not know, uh, when you have a team event, obviously uh, the, the the team scores an, a round score based on the cumulative scores between all of the players. So it's not just win loss draw. Like if you have a five person team event and three people won and two people didn't, then they win the round. Instead, you kind of get a combined score. So if every person in a team scored one by f- fifteen five, uh, which is the difference in which they won, then obviously they'd end up with thirty sixty points. Points, uh, but then I assume that they're capped at, like at a bottom, yes. so you can never lose too badly, and they're also capped yeah. at the top, so you can never win by too much. So it's close even until the final rounds. Right, yeah. because if yeah. let's say if someone gets a very lucky pairing round one and uh, they grab a twenty uh, eighty zero, for example, with four person teams, uh, it's going to be very hard to catch up. So we kept it at uh, sixty to twenty. So like you can 
basically grab three quarters of the points, the same as Worlds. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, let's take a moment to look at uh, what what armies are going to be brought uh, to this event. Uh, so make sure I got this right. I oh, nailed it. There, go me. Um, okay. So uh, Jeffrey, you put this together. Do you want to take us through some of the key information? Uh, yeah, sure. I think the most uh, interesting things that stood out to me was, uh, you know, what? Let's start with the beginning. Of course, we have eighteen teams present. Uh, 80, uh, no, eight countries represented. Uh, I think if you pick nationalities, because we have some mercs, we have some mixed teams, it will be even way more. Uh, but those teams will consist of 72 players. Uh, what stood, really stood out to me is Nighthound being picked eight times. So they are like most yeah, played. the most played faction. Uh, a lot of other factions are being taken. Uh, so only four, I believe, let me check, or five. Yeah, okay, I, I, I separated Iron Jaws, Bone Splitter, Screw Boys, and Big Wah. Because um, we, we all do. That's the right way to yeah. do it. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you look at it that way, then five factions are not in play, which is Flashy Discord, Gits, Ogres, Iron Jaws, and Big Wah, but Iron Jaws was really a surprise to me, to be honest. Like, zero Iron Jaws. It's, uh, it's, actually, it's actually it's very surprising. Like, recently we've seen, like, uh, in singles events, we've seen Flesh of Course win some events or go 5-0 a couple of times, only specifically a couple of times, but they have done. Um, the bit that yeah. stands out for me is there are 18 teams and there aren't 18 Seraphon lists. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what, what we said as well. Yeah, that's yeah. my immediate takeaway. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, it's yeah. only four. It's <laughs> only four. Yeah, there are only four. Uh, yeah, and I think Iron Jaws um, not being there as well is, is super, super weird. I made some notes on this, actually, and I'd like to know what you guys think. I was like, if I was going to take uh, some, if I was going to build a four-man team composition, four-person team composition, sorry, right now, I think my top pick my top five factions I would choose out of would be Nurgle um, and we've only got we've got five Nurgle armies here out of 18 uh, Beast yeah. of Chaos would be in my list as well which would be uh, there's only two here out of 18 Seraphon there's only five uh, four sorry out of 18 and then Zinch uh, where we've actually got quite a couple of them. Oh no, there are three out of eighteen, and then and then my swing one would be LRL potentially, uh, which there are five of those here. Is there any of those any out of them that I've missed that you thought that you would take to a team event if you had the opportunity? Tom, it's got to be Slaves to Darkness for you, right? Is that what you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I think uh, Ko and Gargan, sorry, could be really good uh, in teams because uh, you have a little bit more control about pairing. Yeah. Uh, um, so I think that's uh, th those are viable options and like. 13 dragons like every team has like that one player right where you're like you know we th three of us can play and you know you're the fourth guy we're just going to give you the dragons and then uh so I, I think that would also be a list that uh i was expecting to see maybe even more than we had now and, and i think that's still very good in teams yeah what about you jeffrey is there any any of those like if you were going to build a uh like a like you, regardless of who's playing the list like what factions mm -hmm. would you pick from daughters of cain for you maybe big fan yeah, also because in teams, I think they are really interesting because of the, the grand strat and the battle tactics they have. Because even on Lurkus Below, you can just simply play for the draw or the minor victory. Because if you just, you know, survive the game, don't lose, and you, I mean, you can, uh, you can barely uh, not do the battle tactics every round. You have so many if you just bring the hard render. So they are an interesting pick for me. Um, what else? Sylvanet is also interesting, I think, because I see a lot of four ones uh, with Sylvanet, but that also tells me that they have some really good matchups and some really good battle plans, and they just have some weaknesses as well. But the good thing about teams is that you can kind of ignore the weaknesses and just go fully into the strengths of a book, and uh, that's the power of pairing. Uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I think those two are interesting as well. But for sure, Seraphon Nurgle would be my top picks. Uh, yes. And again, super yeah. weird. Nurgle at five armies, Seraphon at four out of 18. So I, I find that really interesting. I'm just going to quickly just read out for everyone at home, just so you know. From order, there are 34 uh, armies. City Sigma 5, Daughters of Cain 4, Fire Slayers 1, Agnes Deepkin 3, KO 1, 
Lumeth Realm Lords 5, Seraphon 4, Stormcast Eternals 5, and then Sylvaneth 6, New Boys on the Block. For Chaos, Beast of Chaos 2, Blades of Corn 3. I actually want to talk about that, if you don't mind, for a little moment. Three Blades yeah. of Corn lists, all featuring Scarbrand. Um, their stats, actually, at the moment, Corner uh, uh, um, uh, currently sat at a 48% win rate, which is a lot better than where they were pre this GHB, where they were they were running around a 33% win rate. So their their win rate's gone up, and their popularity is also kind of pushed up around the world as well, both in meta representation and play. Um, do you think they play better into this pack? Like, what what are your thoughts? Well, my my first thought on 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 corn is like if I look at the current meta, uh, that's also why I picked Slaves to Darkness at my last tournament, uh, because I see th uh, two things. Because everyone wants to play into uh, into the bounty hunters, you see way more melee. Uh, also, because of the endless spells, I see way more magic. So and blades of corn go well into both melee and they are anti magic. So I think their stunks has gone up pretty much uh, since this new new GHB and the new meta. And yeah. the blood tide change. And the blood tide change, yeah, yeah, that one is huge. Yeah, Tom, you would you be someone to push the corn around? Because I, I was pretty impressed by like even being three, if I'm honest. Yeah, well, to be fair, I do like uh, a lot of the corn demon models, but I, I just I just couldn't paint like I don't want to buy that many pots of red paint, so I, I wouldn't <laughs> see myself play corn to be honest. But uh, I do I do think it's it could be a strong choice, and uh, yeah, we're going to have to see. Uh, we're seeing corn a lot more. Uh, you just mentioned fleshy the courts. Uh, you're going to, you're seeing a lot more not on our event, probably the US, but. Um, yeah, I, th I think they're an interesting choice as well, especially with the the arm. Some of the teams have chosen corn, but don't have like some of the top five, six armies that I would maybe normally pick. So, uh, like if you have like Seraphon and Zinch and I don't know Nurgle, and then you have corn, like okay, but but some armies have like four, three factions, uh, which I would yeah I would maybe put in top ten, but not top five for team events. So then it makes an interesting choice, or maybe they just see something that we don't. And also, also an interesting note is that, like, uh, because they are really heavy into monsters, right? That those are their best war scrolls, and uh, the yeah, the battle line are just food for uh, blood tide points. They are. But uh, it's it's like they don't give away the extra victory point anymore, uh, which they did in the last uh, GHB. Uh, and I think their only real threat is Cronspine because. Yeah, against Corny, he will never die, I guess, because he will eat monsters for for if lunch. He'd have, he'd have the best time. <laughs> well, we do have some for stats. Lunch and dinner. <laughs> yeah, we do have some stats on that, which you've done. I'll just I'll finish this off. Um, Sinesh one. There's always got to be a weirdo. Uh, five Maggotkin, three Skaven, one two Slaves to Darkness, and one Legion of the First Prince. Um, then for death, we got no fleshy courts, uh, eight night haunt, the most popular faction there. Um, one OCR bone reapers, two soul black grave lords, and the destruction, pretty rubbish. Uh, no glitz, no ogres, no iron jaws, one bone splitters, one cruel boys, and five sons of behemoth, uh, which is not really a surprise. And then um, 11 cron spines and 11 purple suns. And again, weird yes. that that's not 18 for 18. Yeah, <laughs> we were thinking the same, right, Tom? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, a lot yeah. of uh, chronometric cocks as well. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, like, I, would you say that you think everyone is here? Like, is it is what is the event been bit, uh, build at? Right? Is it is it come and just bring a team and have some fun, or is it like you know this is a this is a big tournament you've got to try and take away, or a little bit of both? Um, I, well, if. I... No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I think we are just trying to, uh, to uh, yeah, to organize a great tournament, and the community sometimes decides for you. And I think, uh, That's true. <laughs> I think this is going to be a uh, a championship, like yeah. a competitive one for Ooh. for sure. Okay. Like the, the teams coming from from foreign countries are not coming to just to throw some dice around. Uh, they want to grab a result, obviously, because they're going to play at Worlds next year. Uh, I feel, but we have a couple teams. One of the teams is called Drunken Lions. Are they are are they going to come and play for first place? 
Probably not, uh, but they're going to have fun regardless, right? So, uh, and because it's a chess clock, uh, because chess clocks are mandatory, I think that also sets maybe a little bit of a tone. You're going to really have to help me with some of the team names, just FYI. They're a, <laughs> they're a little <laughs> bit for me. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just looking at the rest of the uh, the stats, uh, Battle Ridge, by far and away, unsurprisingly, the most taken uh, battalion with Bounty Hunters in second, in Expert Conquerors in third. Uh, Tom, any surprise to you? Any of those? No, I would have maybe... Uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Warlord or Command Underage would be in the top three, but uh, I think, yeah, no real surprises. Uh, good. All right, yeah. And then, uh, Jeffrey, you've done excellent putting this stuff together. Uh, do you want to talk us through Grand Strats? Because you're allowed to use book Grand Strats in this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the most surprising thing to me... Uh was uh, I, I will read them out loud in a sec but uh take what's theirs i've seen those a lot on the other tournaments like i think uh, maybe 50 percent of the people play it mm. and now i was expecting 18 right <laughs> but it's only nine only nine teams took uh, take what's there so that's kind of a surprise to me yes. but uh it was a bit of too much work for me to separate all the 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 battle tomb grand strats so I'll just I just piled them up and we have thirty one battle tone grand strats. Yeah, I think lo- was, uh, I think yeah. long term it'll be really interesting to see which armies most benefit from uh, those grand strats, which is going to be the work of obviously Ziggy and Rob at the T Sports Stat Center to actually grab that information yeah. long term. Um, because I, I really feel like Doors of Cain is the correct answer, but like I don't want to. I'm Nurgle? not. Pu- Nurgle has a good one as well. No, Nurgle has a good one as well, definitely. Uh, but I think there's definitely some armies who who have more of it than others. But yes. um, I think yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, for sure. What about endless spells? Obviously, Purple Sun right in there. Yeah, yeah, endless spells. Uh, Purple Sun and Karks are both taken eleven times, uh, and uh, there is a lot of endless spells. Uh, being thrown around at this tournament. I believe it was somewhere around 45 at the top of my head. It's, it's uh, and I, but I was actually expecting to see more Jaws. There is only three. I don't know. Like, Jaws is one of those really interesting spells. Uh, like, because this is, this is, as much as it's going to be a list review show, like, it's also kind of like a meta analysis at the moment, right? We're two months into the new GHB. We've just, uh, if you go into the Honest War Game and look at the stats, for example, on the stats tab, they've just been updated. I think we're at 49 events now. Um, and you'll see that the, in fact, actually, I can just show everyone right now. You'll see uh, the win rates um, are pretty even. There's only three armies above 55%, which is Seraphon, Magikin, and uh, Sons of Behemoth. And they're only at 56%. So it's probably the best the game has ever ever been and then below the 45 percent mark we've only got soul blight ogres flesh eater courts bone reapers cruel boys and gits of those we've got one cruel boys player at this event uh we've got one bone reapers player at this event and i think maybe one or two soul blight grave lords players at this event everyone else is in the kind of happy band so like age of sigma at the minute is an incredibly balanced place um or like or at least the 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 stats say so uh so um it's unsurprising uh, to see like a, like such a mix in the meta in a team format. Yeah, that, like if 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 what we expected happened, like eighteen or twenty teams uh, uh, bringing the same, let's say six armies, it, it wouldn't be really a lot of fun, right? So I think it's a, it's a, it's a great thing that we have a lot of diversity, and uh, I think even for the bottom armies uh, percentage wise i also think it's because for example let's pick out bone reapers i think bone reapers is underrepresented as well like a lot of the good players have now picked up sylvaneth picked up night hunt but I'm, I'm pretty sure if you give darren or owen or or stephen follows or whoever if you give them bone reapers they're also going to go four one and five oh so i think uh it's also sometimes the uh bottom armies uh, for example i was it um who was it again? Who went gets uh, to gets to five or like three times in the US? That's Gavin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Gavin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, it also proves the point that the player just decides uh, what what armies are going to see the table uh, and be viable again. Uh, yeah, but I think a lot of different factions are great. I, I think like I was surprised seeing that that less of that few Seraphon, but it's a good thing, really. 
yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it's it's very very odd. Uh, can I just thank Bob the Skull uh, and also Atreya for resubscribing? Much appreciated. Um, my boy Horagas is in there though at five. The only thing that makes me scared to run a piece of Chaos Army uh, in there. There's five versions of that, which I still think is fairly low. Um, I know Jeffrey, you're saying uh, Jaws being low um, uh, as a end of spell. Personally, not a fan, uh, but you think it's good for the the damage output into some armies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also there is some endless spells where you can like, or or spells where you can like, half the movement, so yeah. it can do some uh, some serious damage. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, top five war scrolls though. Take me through those. Yeah. So <laughs> what I did with the counting was like if a uh, if a unit was reinforced, I counted them twice or thrice. Like, uh, so that's the way I counted them. But uh, the one like way ahead of the rest is uh, Blade Guy's Revenants being taken 31 times. I mean, maybe not a surprise since we also have eight Nighthound list, which is like the most present at the tournament. Uh, then in second place we have 14 and a half Blight Lords. The half is because one player picked like a single Blight Lord. Uh, and then a little bit of surprise to me was the 14 Wardens. So Lumineth. I think, uh, I think I think not. Like most of them are Teclian builds, right? Like like, mm -hmm. and I just think that they're still brilliant. Like I don't know. I yeah, don't, yeah, I, they are good. <laughs> I never knew why they fell off. I guess just boredom. I guess just eventually boredom. <laughs> Staying in that castle yeah. for five games over a weekend eventually has got to break your heart. And your spears. But, yeah, but, but <laughs> yeah, what's <true>. uh... <laughs> yeah, the spears are so annoying. But what's actually uh, uh, what actually sucks for them a little bit is like the sentinels. They have the new. Uh... Oh, my camera's dropping. You guys still hear me? We can yes. still hear you, bud. Okay, I'll just keep talking then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the sentinels they have the new uh, the new um, um, what is it called? Shining Company rule, right? Mm. Because uh, the the battle box is actually uh, allowed, at, yeah, in play, because it it dropped before the for the cutoff. So uh, the sentinels have the new shining company rules, but the wardens don't have it yet. Also, so that's a bit of a weird thing. Also, Teclis is the best anti magic available, right? Like, it, I guess, like, yeah. For a variety of different reasons, the ward save, the ability to unbind spells, and also obviously the 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 AOE aura protection that comes from him. So like, it feels like feels like really smart into the meta, like generally. Yeah. Um, skinks, I see the word on there. How many <laughs> bloody skinks do I have to watch? <laughs> a lot. Well, it's, but uh... if, if someone asked you a year ago that uh, there was going to be a, a GT where you'd have the same amount of tree revenants as, as you had skinks, I'd you be yeah, like I, I'm still gobsmacked. There's not 18 for 18 <laughs> Seraphon here. So actually, I'll, I, you know, what? I'll take my small victory and I'll go home with it. Like this is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now, yeah, now you're gonna be looking at 310 uh, Blade Guys Revenants now. So <laughs> that's spooky. That's very spooky. Yeah, that's very spooky. Uh, and then unsurprising to anyone who's been keeping track of stats for Age Sigmar, but uh, looking at the drops. Um, the most uh, there are 18 one drop armies here i think that's correct and then 12 yes. two drops uh so um that's going to that's going to factor in pretty massively in some of these games as well i think yes yeah for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. do you have any strategies around the one drop at the moment is there any thoughts around it you win the dice roll yeah. <laughs> yeah good good yes and the roll off yeah, this, <laughs> excellent i'll take it thanks <laughs> all right okay so uh, now we're going to play a game so uh there are like we talked about there are 18 teams and and we i don't think you two have discussed this beforehand unless you have uh and so i asked uh i asked both of you to pick uh your favorite team set of lists and then we're going to go through it and talk about why. Uh, your wild card, me and Owen used to do this every every week on the stat show when we would look at events or when we do list reviews. Uh, and then um, our likely to win. Uh, so our big got, uh, our big guesses. So uh, Tom, I'll start with you, if you don't mind. So yeah, uh, sure. what's your uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite team and lists and why? Yeah. 
Yeah, so my my favorite team uh, list wise, like the, the the armies they put together as a four person team uh, was the Fallen Angels, uh, bringing uh, Illuminous uh, Realm Lords, uh, Nurgle, uh, Ko, and uh, Stormcast uh, Dragons, because I think like every one of those armies can dominate um, some of the battle plans every round. So I think they make a very good sh uh, chance, and um, I I believe three of the four players in that team are also world players. Uh, so they know what they're doing. Uh, I think the fourth one is Martijn Zuidema. You might know him. He lives in the UK. He uh, works for uh, Games Workshop also, but he's Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think he's Warmaster or something on Twitter, but I'm not sure. Um, so um, so I think I really like their, their army composition. And I think they have uh, like a good counter for almost all the other teams. Uh, to set up, and I think, like I said, like I said before, I think Ko is a real sleeper pick right now because uh, they have a lot of play. They can really dominate some missions and definitely dominate some matchups. Like there's eight night hunts. I think Ko is going to be very happy about that. Yes, personally. yes, yes. They they really are because they can just stick out so many shots to the yeah to for the the for the night haunt to have to save. Okay, uh, that's pretty interesting. And and what it, what stuck out with you? Just the variety of the list or the strength? Um, yeah, I, I liked uh, the fact that they had like two alpha armies, one uh, a more magic dominated army, uh, and the KO being very mobile. So they had great like picks. It's not just uh, four alpha strike armies, for example. They can really they can they can uh, switch around their matchups um, depending on what team they face. That that's what I liked. Yeah, we've also seen KO go. Uh, I think we've had three or four five O's with KO in singles events for a while, and I agree with you. Like a sleeper pick because if you aren't following competitive age Sigma on a Monday on the Monday Stat Center show, then maybe you're not paying attention. But they've been doing really well uh, for the past several weeks, so um, uh, I'm I'm not surprised to see them in there. Okay, really fun, and that's Fallen Angels. So they're your they're your fave pick. Okay, yes. lovely, Jeffrey. What about you? Uh, for my favorite lists, I picked the uh, Salty Licorices. Oh, did you? Uh, the... Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the Danish, uh, with the Rune, the Danish captain. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Rune is the captain. Uh, but uh, I picked them because they have a, a good composition, in my opinion. They have the Nighthound, Nurgle, uh, Korn, and uh, which uh, Cities of Sigmar. But uh, an interesting list, and I, I just see the mix a little bit. Like they have a bit of uh, bodies and shooting. They have a little bit of uh, anti magic. Uh, yeah, just you know, the Nurgle does the Nurgle thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm interesting to see uh, what will happen. Okay. But I like their, uh, I like their team composition. Their team composition. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Um, my favorite. Uh, my favorite is uh, Turbo. Uh, I don't know if you know who Turbo <laughs> are. Yes, Turbo, Turbo, Turbo. Turbo yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, so and my reasoning for that is is because <laughs> they've really polarized their lists, and I always like you two are both like, oh, they've got a nice mix, and I'm like, these guys have not got that. They have completely <laughs> gone the other way. So just run you through it really quickly. You got Soulblight Grave Lords being run by Duke Clomp. Uh, he's got Gorslav, Necromancer, Vampire Lord, and then he's got. I think he's got two oh, two hundred and twenty Deadwalker zombies. Yeah, two twenty or two forty or something. Yeah. That was yeah. the uh, Dutch uh, coach, actually. Uh... Okay, well, love that. Uh, and then two units of five black knights somehow also fits in, and it's still a <laughs> and it's still a two drop, which is hilarious. So love that. Yeah. Then Peter Zudgist is running. I don't know if I've said that right. Apologies. Uh, is running LRL, um, and then again he's got himself um, uh, like a Venari Regent Catalar and the Enlightener, and the Enlightener is obviously really c clutch because you can do that three up extra spell again, which is fun. Then thirty Sentinels, uh, and then he's got himself sixty Warden. I'm pretty certain, which is also mm -hmm. just terrifying. And the Purple Sun. Uh, Olaf has just got three Gatebreakers and a Cronspine Incarnate, which I love. Yeah, that's amazing. And then Ryan is running just a great Zinch list because it's um, uh, a Great Bray Shaman. Uh, this is Guild of Summoners as well. So you can summon a Lord of Change, like which again is just not something I ever see, which is really, really fun. And then he's got uh, a Great Brave Shaman, a Magister on Disc, Blue Scribes, Change Caster, Zangor Shaman, and Chaos Sorcerer Lord on Manticore. And then 10 Pinks, some Carrix, some Iron Golems, and some Enlightened Cogs, Soul Screen Bridge, and Spell Portal. So he's going to be trying summoning a Lord of Change, which I just 
Yes. <laughs> just yeah, it's just so wild and so a weird. Lot of change every turn. Yeah. Every turn. <laughs> uh so yeah, they're uh yeah, Goat Watch is back. So I love Turbo. So uh shout out to Turbo. Those are my favorite lists. Definitely. Yeah. Do you know them? Oh, you yeah, 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 yeah. We do. We do. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, we announced uh, a couple of weeks ago that we're going to do two extra awards. Like, okay. we have, like, one first, second, third place. And then we have best painted, like, best army on show, like, coolest army. And uh, best sportsmanship, obviously. And uh, But we a actually added two more trophies that, that the teams can win. One of them is best dressed. Nice. Uh, and the other one is for the person that uh, destroys the most points with his purple sun. Uh, so we're going to keep track of that uh, for, for an individual person. But this team, Turbo, said we only have one goal. We want to win the best dressed award. So I think they all got like wigs and stuff like that. And they're going to come like that because, uh, yeah, it's just a really fun uh, bunch of guys. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Turbo, already hilarious. my favorite. All right, great. All right, love that. Shout out but, to Turbo. But the, the, the bummer is a little bit that it's like uh, what they will do is like kind of a Dutch thing. Uh, so it's hard to explain to, to i'm going to show you when you're here next week i'm going to show you what yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah then you'll understand but it's yeah okay that makes sense okay um uh okay so next up <laughs> uh let's talk about um our likely to win okay time to get serious Ooh. Serious, Ooh. yeah, I know. Uh, thank you, T Man Cash, for subscribing in the chat, by the way. Okay, Watch so your uh, words, guys. <laughs> Jeffrey, this is you. Like, who have you chosen? Uh, I picked Purple Fun. Purple Fun, uh, okay. Let me grab the list real quick. Purple okay. Fun, take a moment. <laughs> yeah, um, the reason I chose them is also because I know that team a little bit and they have some decent players actually to be fair there's a lot of good players out there so it's for me it's really hard to tell but uh again also their their composition i really liked they have the 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 night hound but he's actually because everyone is coming with the blade guys revenants but uh this guy is playing the heritage so to uh deny you your uh, your ward save uh which i find interesting and i also like the benches a lot against all the endless spells and then the other guy has uh techless with some uh, wardens and sentinels uh they have a they have 12 storm fiends in a skaven army <laughs> which is insane uh and the other guy is playing sylvanet uh it's a bit of a of a of a uh, odd list but I know this guy, uh, he just, I don't know. Sometimes you think, like, what is he doing? But then he still ends up winning. So, <laughs> yeah, they uh, I picked them for my uh, most likely to win. Okay, interesting. Okay, I, I can't wait Sunday for us all to see. A little side bet, <laughs> yeah. 10 euros. Yeah, on it. Okay. <laughs> sure, let's do it. <laughs> Tom, what about you? Yeah, so uh, after Worlds, I was actually pretty impressed with the French because of their uh, the preparation they did, uh, both before the event and during the event. Mm. So uh, I, I went for the French team, uh, French Kiss, Ooh. Uh, because, uh, yeah, yeah, because I think uh, we've had uh, David Roland, was at Worlds and he was at the Alliance Open Masters before, and he's a very good player. And I don't know if, if you've seen the list, but it's a Tempest Eye list with one Celestial Hurricanum. And then 15 Outriders, uh, 10 kin uh, Heart Renders, and then four Dragons, four Full Nader. So he only has one hero, uh, yeah. which I thought was, was an interesting list. So I, so this is this intrigues me, and I know he's a good player. Uh, then we have uh, Michael Atali, who's playing uh, Night Hunt, a pretty, uh, I think, pretty standard list. Uh, Frank is playing also 12 Storm Fiends. And uh, we have Christoph, who is playing uh, Beast of Chaos with um, 12 Enlightened on Disc and Cronspine. So uh, nice. that that those guys, we know what the preparation they do, and and Guillaume, the French captain, is actually their coach next week. Also, and, he, and so Guillaume's if, just been revoted in as the French captain, right? Yes, yes, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I think like with the amount of preparation, I know they will do. Um, I, yeah, they're, they're just one of the. I think they're top contender for me. Okay, exciting, exciting. Okay, uh, my pick. Uh, I've gone for Hero Hammer United. 
do not know. Also him. Danish. Oh, Danish yeah, yeah, yeah. What is wrong with me? I can't help myself. Okay, so... <laughs> because say... Kasper is, right? Yes, yes, Kasper is in the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and also because all of these lists and all of these players have performed very well very recently, I'm pretty certain. So Mark Knudsen is running um, uh, a silver net list with Alariel, Spirit of Durthu, Branchwith, Battle Mage, Dryads, Dryads, um, uh, Tree Revs and Scouts Wild Hunt. Now, this has got some great spells, specifically Horogast is in there and the Spite Swarm Hive. Um, and I really like the Horogast pick because it kind of auto wins yes. some some matchups. So I really like that. Then Casper is running Stormcast Eternals with the Celestine Prime, the Star Drake, and that allied in Slan Star Master with the Everblaze Comet, which has done. Yeah, that's. Yeah. disgusting <laughs> yeah it's done yeah. super well and i'm pretty certain casper went 5-0 last week or 4-1 last week with this same list because he's also got those three units of, of paladors as well those two which units of three really paladors, cool. which is super cool uh so love that and that's like a very up-to-date very techie list uh christian's running uh the maggot and nurgle with lord of fictions blob or got gut rock uh, and then he's got two lots of two Puscoils, and then he's got two lots of five Putrid Blight Kings. Uh, so I like that as well. I think any Nurgle list is basically the same, uh, but it's just a rock solid list in my opinion. Uh, and then, yeah. <laughs> like, they're not the same, but they also are. He's just like, I've got 12 flies. I'm like, oh, you've got four flies, but it still feels the same. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, I think that one plays better on some missions because it's got those camping Blight Kings. Uh, yes. which I think is really clever, especially because they're in Expert Conquerors. Uh, and then you've got um, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Ramusen, uh, who's running a Legion of the First Prince list with Bellacor, Changecaster, and Kairos, and, uh, and the Cronspine. And I just think that that's an incredibly good, um, an incredibly good like denial list that in the right matchups, and especially on the right battle plans, you can just be like, I outscore because the, the scoring in, in this battle plaque is, is so razor thin. Like the difference between wins and losses, I, I don't, we haven't yes. got any results on that yet. But I personally, this is anecdotal, uh, but I think that the wins are very close, very often. Like especially when two players are quite good. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. experienced the same. There's not a lot of blow blowouts, and especially not against Legion of the First Prince. It's a hard army to blow out uh, out of the water uh, in a matchup, in any matchup. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, tough. for sure. Yeah, really. And tough. I mean, I, I'm interested to see uh, because he bonded his crown spine to the chain scaster. So he can do some nasty stuff with that as well. Because if he just blows up his change caster, then Grand Spine is wild, and yeah, people so. seem to forget about him going wild sometimes. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. And he's so much better in that situation. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, I don't know if you know those players, but I, I like the lists at least. Like, I think the lists are great. Um, and For I do sure. know. I do think I know a couple of players, and I know that they're good. All right. Okay. So now we've all got a bet on who we think is going to take it out. It's time to talk about wild cards, crazy mofo's who might just have a glint in their eye and a win. Uh, Tom, let's start with you. Who you got as a wild card? Yeah, so uh, I got a couple of weeks ago, I got contacted by uh, Marco, which is the Serbian, uh, now the Serbian captain, because they wanted to apply uh, and join Worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I told them about the team event, and uh, they decided to join. And um, I don't know them very well, actually. I have no idea if they are good players or not, or whatever. But uh, if, looking at the lists, I think... The list looks like they know what they're doing, uh, and because he's like a really cool guy, so I just thought, you know what, I'm going to make them the uh, the outsider, uh, the, the wild card, so to speak, for this event, uh, because they're, they're going to be attending for the first time, and just like with the Danish uh, with Worlds, uh, like uh, two years ago, uh, sometimes uh, the new guy on the block uh, can really surprise you. So uh, I picked them. So it's the Dragon Order uh, team name. Okay. All right, the Dragon Order. Okay, shout out to them, the Serbians, first time, and they weren't at Worlds last year, so like they're no. they're, they're a true dark wild card. Yes, which um, I love. Okay, and and I know a lot of like the that that region of the world plays some very scary levels of Warhammer, because uh, that's also true in 40k, right? Like when when they turn yes. up, you like, but they're also people who don't really like necessarily have a lot of media presence in that. Inf so that's gonna be interesting. Uh, Jeffrey, what about you? Um, first I actually picked the Hero Hammers as wild cards, but that's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh, I understood wild card a bit, uh, wrong. That's okay. But, uh, I think actually, uh, my wild card after thinking a bit about it is, uh, Turbo. 
Because turbo. they have such odds lists, right? So if they win, that would be amazing. <laughs> hey, Turbo, if you're listening and doing best dress, I want a T-shirt as well or whatever you do. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, you should ask for the wig. They are going. To oh, yeah, I see Peter is also in the chat, I see. So uh, Turbo. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Oh, he says, I'll get you one. So you'll get a nice wig. <laughs> All right, good. It can't be anywhere near as bad as the UN hat from Worlds. Um, uh, <laughs> that's the worst thing I've ever worn. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, like amazing. It's like so, Turbo, because they've got some pretty crazy lists, right? Yeah. The only For problem sure. is, I think, like with two hundred and forty zombies and a chest clock. Eh, but we'll see. I mean, you can hope. That's what you can do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can already, I can already see him like with a, uh, a Rocky Balboa uh, soundtrack montage, like to training his zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> Removing, rabbit, putting rabbit them fingers. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, uh, okay, so um, uh, my wild card, my wild card, because they, they kind of performed is. Uh, oh no, I've got that wrong. Um, where's my wild card? I've, got, I've done turbo twice and no, that's hold on hold on it's not wild card. <laughs> it's uh it's the it's the island boys uh ah, i'm pretty yeah. certain uh is this the one with ryan in no this isn't the one yeah. with ryan in it yes, is it yeah. is yes yes yeah. uh so uh the island boys uh has got ryan oh hold on let me get all the team in uh yeah there we go uh ryan uh Aguis is running i've always said his name wrong so these are the this is the maltese team right yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, like I got to hang out with them a bit of Worlds last year. Ryan played Zinch. Their win rate was in the toilet at Worlds. One of the few people he went eighteen. He, like he won all of his games, like all of his games, and some of them were like showstoppers. We streamed a couple of them, and it was pretty incredible. Like they, there was some like very techy yeah, he's play. Really good. He's really good. He's really, yeah. really good. Yeah, and I know that they've got like their entire community was part of the Age of Sigmar <laughs> team for Worlds. Like they were like, this is everyone in Mortu who plays Age of Sigmar is in the team. Um, but he's running <laughs> Sylvaneth, a war song. He, so he's running Sylvaneth as well, which seeing how well he was able to move his uh, very fragile Zinch army around, uh, I think giving him a deadly weapon like Sylvaneth is yes. pretty scary. Uh, then the rest of the team, um, you've got uh, William. Uh, who's brought a Gargant's list, and you, you can't go wrong with the Gargant's list, that never hurts. Uh, Duncan is running Nighthorn, and that's a bunch of Blade Geist Revenants. And then Natalie uh, is running Daughters of Cain, and it's a bunch of um, uh, Blood Sisters and Marathi, but it's also got the Bloodrack Shrine as well. So a little bit of combat Daughters of Cain, which I think with the Heart of Fury, which works really well into the right like combat matchups, uh, I think. So uh, yeah, like a little bit of. A little bit of a, a little bit of a wild card, um, but maybe when they've reduced down to four and they haven't had to bring like the guy who <laughs> the water boy is kind of also in the team, and also the water boy's dad isn't in the team, then maybe like <laughs> maybe they slim the team down a little bit to maybe the the stars of the show. Uh, maybe maybe we'll see them uh, get out there a little bit better. I'm not really I'm, I'm not certain. I'm not certain. Okay, so uh, all of the links to all of the information we've been talking about, which is army lists, uh, a link to Pun Pun, which is where you're going to be able to track the lists and also the results as the game goes on, and also to the stats that Jeffrey's put together, will all be included in the show notes, whichever platform you're listening on. Um, we're going to be able to watch it all live on the T Sports Network. Um, so that'll be over the weekend. And if you follow the T Sports Network Twitter or the I'm swinging over Twitter or any of those things. Uh, we'll constantly post up schedules so you'll be able to check it all out, uh, which will be good. Uh, is there anything else, Tom, you think we should be, uh, and Jeffrey, that you think we should be looking out for at the event? Like, uh, uh, is this an event you want people to go to next year? It's a regular thing. Like, what, what's the situation? Yeah, well, of course. Like, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, no, you know what? We're just going to do this year. Next year, don't buy tickets. Uh, <laughs> no, no, obviously. That's it, uh, just one. Like, in, in the end, what, what I was hesitant about, we did an AOTC last year with only Dutch teams and some Belgian teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we also did four person teams. And I would like to grow to six or maybe even eight person teams. But uh, the meta in the Netherlands isn't that, uh, yeah, well. I don't know how you can how you can say it, but it's not that big. We don't have a very big community yet that plays tournaments on a regular basis. So uh, for next year, I would love to maybe go to six or eight uh, person teams. Uh, and yeah, of course, we want to grow. Uh, in the end, we're going to have to get a lot of extra tables as well for Worlds because uh, yeah, we're going to get like between 150 and 200 people. So uh, it would be great, obviously, to have like the AOTC be uh, kind of a 
prepping event for the teams that want to compete at Worlds. Uh, even though it's going to obviously be a different GHB because we're switching every six months now. But mm. um, yeah, I, obviously uh, that that would be fantastic. And in February, for example, we, we have the Masters, which is like the same level event, but it's a singles event. Uh, the current, uh, where, where the winner wins a free ticket for the event next year to defend their title. And they're like the Alliance Open champion, which for right now Stephen follows actually is the current uh champion for us so uh so that's also an event we're looking to grow out just like this one yes okay. all right excellent love that love that okay and i'll include uh the links as well to all of those like resources in the show notes below so if you're in europe or even if you're somewhere else in the world like i know we've got a lot of australians and americans uh traveling over i'm sure you'd love to have people from uh, all across the globe come to these events right for yes. sure <laughs> yeah the more the merrier we've, right we've been speaking with anthony the coach a little bit and he, we would also love to join uh dutch event maybe next year so uh yeah it would be great obviously uh, to have people from all over i think that's what makes warren great right like uh meeting all those people at worlds was fantastic so uh yeah i agree i agree all right well but, very much looking forward to it is there anything we might have missed before we head out today uh no i i think the most interesting things were in the stats right like, yeah, and, a good uh, thing maybe maybe to mention is we're doing a charity raffle at the event itself. I, I'm going to imagine yeah. a lot of people that are coming to the event are also watching this, so I'm going to do a little bit of a plug. But we have a foundation called uh, Het Vergeten Kind, which is like the, the forgotten child. And we're going to do a charity raffle at the event as well, where you can uh, win some awesome prizes. Uh, we have like a coaching session from uh, Manny Chima, for example. A coaching session from Darren Watson is up for grabs. Uh, and other very cool prizes. So for the people that are coming or thinking about coming, I think uh, it would be a great way to spend your money as well at the event. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Okay, yeah, I I'm super looking forward to the event. Um, it's going to be really good. Uh, so, And I can't wait to watch some games. Can't wait for some team format Warhammer again. So bored best of just format. one... Yeah, yeah, best format. One game. I want to see three sweaty people sit around <laughs> one final <laughs> game, nervous and worrying about the result. And that's what I want. That's what, that's what gets Unless me it's excited. Ryan. Unless it's Ryan on that last table. Well, it will always be Ryan on the last table. Yeah. <laughs> Chess cocks, Ryan. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, uh, Tom, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, I'll also include the uh, the, the uh, social media handles for both Tom uh, and Jeffrey in the show notes as well, so you can all uh, get in touch with them for any reason you want to. And I do encourage you to uh, follow both of them because they're both wonderful people. Uh, my love to you. Uh, I'll be live streaming, by the way, with Mr. Colonel Cabbage will be my table boss, uh, and then also Mr. The Owen Jack is going to be my co-commentator uh, so uh, that should be some uh, pretty good commentary um, I'm the only guy letting the team down in that front so uh, <laughs> so uh, he was already uh, present at, the, at our last Masters uh, actually uh, Owen yeah yeah, yes. yeah, so he he knows the... the you can show you around a bit. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I can't wait to leave my table for about eight minutes and then stay back in there. Like, <laughs> I think in the future, you know, when people book me for events, they'll be like, where do you want to stay? I'll like, just get me a sleeping bag next to the desk. Like, I'll just stay there. It saves me walking back and forth. Uh, don't is... don't get lost in Amsterdam though. We we yeah. need you day two as well, uh, Rob. Uh, don't worry, I'll be asleep. I'll be like eight pm <laughs> <laughs> straight asleep. <laughs> well, what was Amsterdam like? Well, there's this one hotel that I slept in and it was lovely. Uh, right. <laughs> well, it's lovely talking to you both. Thank you very much, chat. If you've enjoyed it, thank you uh, and appreciate you. Thank you to everyone for subscribing. If you're watching this back on. YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, share it with your friends, especially people who might be new so they can find out more about Competitive Age Sigma and how friendly the people are who run it and are, are, are responsible for it. Uh, and then also, if you listen to us as a podcast, stay hydrated. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you soon.